sorry my dear brothers and sisters actually this is in continuation to the previous uh, session that is i think lesson number 31 if i'm not wrong um there happened to be a technical glitch and i couldn't complete on time and sorry something got disconnected or something went wrong all right so just a quick recap because we had that interruption uh, for all unknown reasons um we were talking about the interaction between our lord jesus and our dear father right and these days you see people enter into the prayer room and they either have no idea or they have all idea and they get all worked up and they <clears throat> put their shopping list right in front of the father and then they say goodbye with the flying kiss and they say father yeah Uh, you ensure that you fulfill all my shopping list or no? something like that and they <laughs> and they leave the place it's quite funny you know and you will see other category of people they generally get into the business of um, um you know asking the father father tell me what i should do that is also not the right mannerism to pray see if you're falling under the line of god's authority there is always a mannerism that god expects you to follow okay and the more you get into that mannerism the more the relationship builds up the 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 intimacy builds up the fellowship builds up right and that's exactly what god expects from every one of us if you are that believer in christ this is what god expects and an other category of people you see they get into the fellowship with god and uh, they actually make the right choices like father like, like jesus made uh, they put in up they they put up their list but um, they don't emphasize okay father i'm leaving this place but um, i will be waiting for your response and uh, you will have to let me know they also make a mistake what is the mistake it's like a monologue right it's still a monologue it's no different from the previous uh, category of people uh, who said that father this is my shopping list catch it catch it and all that they throw the ball right on a table uh, and then <laughs> you know they they say goodbye to him correct and that is what um you know makes god very uncomfortable i mean it's a un imagine right you your 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 child comes and he doesn't even give you an opportunity to talk what kind of uh, uh, you know fellowship is that would you enjoy but how come you want god to enjoy such a fellowship and that's what we discussed from the book of luke chapter 6 verse 13 as how jesus makes that beautiful fellowship and a wonderful interaction with his father and tells it father i've come here to make a choice of the disciples but actually i don't want to make the choice you make the choice and the father says no no you tell me what you think and let me decide and let me see how much you judge and let me correct you based on that you're still my son you have the liberty to make your choices but still i'll make the final take the final call but not without hearing from you that will be more emphatical my son it's like dictatorship i'm not a dictator i'm your loving father you're loving you're my loving son you have all the birthright um, you have all the freedom you 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 have the liberty and you we we enacted a little drama right uh, between father and son this is how it, the interaction could have taken place and why we did that little bit of enactment is because you need to get that idea of prayer it shouldn't be monologue it should be a dialogue and that's the sixth category of people who and i did not count really maybe fifth or sixth category um who generally don't emphasize anything to god but they ensure that they make their request known to him that is it written philippians chapter 4 verse 6 beautiful verse be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be more made known to god this is the principle 
on which Jesus operates and Jesus makes his petition clearer to God. Yeah. Is not emphatical, neither he had been passive, nor he had overwhelmed the Lord with the shopping list and then ask him to decide and gently say, your will is done, Father, bye-bye, goodbye, and flying kiss to him and said, Amen and Hallelujah, and then walking out of the house or, or, the, or the prayer room. That also God doesn't enjoy. Yeah. And Philippians 4, 6 is a very, very balanced verse. And anyone that are submissive to this authority of God or that, that, that are uh, living, made a choice to live under this authority, the leadership of our Father in heaven, always have this kind of balanced prayer. Yes. The balanced prayer simply means that you will make the right choice at any given point of time. Why? Because the Holy Spirit within you is going to help you. And I gave you all the references. John 14, 6, John 14, 23, um, right? John 14, um, sorry, John 14, 26, 23. All of these are given. He may helps you to remember the scriptures and reminds you of the promises and many other things we spoke through, right? And that is the gift. That is the blessing. That is the blessed assurance. You can call it in any tense you want, right? That's a blessed assurance. What Bible guarantees to you and me uh, without a single question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, see, imagine, right? You 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 think of all the other categories except from the last category, the suitable category, which follows falls under Philippians four six and. I proved it to you from the word of God, from the book of Luke, uh, chapter 6 and 13, as how Jesus followed that principle and asked, asked God. And not only during that point of time, all along his life, I, this is the way how Jesus interacted with his father. And that's why he's called as a foreigner. By all means, in all aspects, by all doctrines, by all teachings, he himself always presented, he, he, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a foreigner, as a role model. And Bible always encourages us, if you are the follower of Christ, if you are a disciple in Christ, if you are falling under this peripherals of discipleship, yes, you will always be mindful of this principle of um, Philippians 4, 6. You will be anxious for nothing. Yeah, I've seen many people uh, who don't fall under this authority of God. You can clearly make out with their expressions. You can clearly make out through their expectations. After the prayer, not before the prayer. Before the prayer, you all get worked up. Uh, it's it's quite natural. You all you're all excited to meet the Father. Agreed. But after the prayer, you continue to come out of the room or walk out of the room with the same excitement, with the same anxiety. It's no more excitement, right? Excitement gets transformed to anxiety, uh, and you walk out of the room with that anxiety. Oh, when God is going to answer? Is God going to answer? Uh, he, or is he going to reject? Uh, uh, when I would get my answer? Is God going to answer? When I going to go, going to get my answer? How this will take place? Um, uh, why at all God should answer? Is he really going to answer? You come out with 200 odd questions in your mind and that translates to something called as disbelief mixed with anxiety and mixed with, you know, what I say, Lack of faith and confidence, lack of trust, and um, you're unfaithful to God. In other words, it translates to you're not the child of light. Yeah, you're not the beloved child of God. Why? Because if that little baby who trusts in the father, when the father lifts up the little baby, you should see the baby holds the father either by a little finger or uh, you know, it, it catches hold of the shirt or it catches hold of the neck or something like that, right? Because why? That um, that symbolizes how much the baby trusts and also that symbolizes how much feeble the baby is that it needs that support. Therefore, I'm catching hold of you. And the father is anyway holding the baby, but still the baby also holds, yeah? Um, what to say? Um, confirming the trust. As much as the father has lifted the baby with that love and compassion and the, um, you know, and that intimacy and that fellowship which the father expects, little baby, with love, right? And the baby also confirms, 
holding back uh, or clinging to the father's uh, neck or something like that or they embrace right lying comfortably on the the, the neck pit or something like that i'm sorry I'm sorry. Uh, the neck pit is something that they would be comfortably lying, and then they would be looking for complete evidence of <laughs> uh, what I say, standing by the father or uh, being merged with the father or one in father or you can call it as you know in in submittance to the father's authority. You can have so many definitions to that symbolical representation of the child lying comfortably on the neck pit of the father or on the shoulders of the father. Yes, this is the representation of prayer. And each time you get into the prayer room, is exactly what you will be, you know, doing, or this is what exactly what you should be doing. In other words, rather, and any person who is involved in this kind of actions they will truly enjoy the presence of the father and the dialogue the interaction with the father yeah but the little baby is not capable to talk but it makes all funny noises and it tries to interact with the father but father interacts back in the same voice have you, have you seen fathers lifting or mothers lifting the little baby they continue to interact in the same language in the same funny language uh oh uh, whatever the funny noises the baby makes. Wonderful, loving, sleek and cute voice. But when the baby is grown up, it continues to talk. Or it, it, it is capable to utter few words. And the father continues to utter in the same level of language. Right? The father doesn't pick up a Shakespeare quote and s starts to talk in that English with filled with grammar. Uh, all the all sorts of you know past uh, participle and the past continuous and present continuous. <laughs> the baby doesn't understand it. He continues to talk in the baby language. But as the baby grows now, as a, from a toddler perspective to the little boy, three or four year old, uh, you know, they are non-stop. They open their mouth. They just don't know how to shut up, and they continue to interact. They don't, you know, any loving mother or father, they are very, very patient to that enormous number of questions the child would be asking or they would, how they would love to answer. They don't get irritated. Loving father, loving mother. These days they are not very patient enough. They would say, no, stay quiet, keep quiet. This is what they would say. Yeah. But then any loving father, loving mother, they would obviously teach them that they should have that controlled speech and all that. But a four-year-old a little boy or girl, they don't understand. Therefore, they get to that level and they continue to interact. I'm talking about the fellowship, the standards of fellowship, the different methods of fellowship, the different categories of fellowship as you grow in your spiritual walk with God. Yeah? You're, you're 18 years old. You took the water baptism. You know, who, who are you to God? You are that little baby. I gave you that example. Clinging on to the father and lying on the father's neck and shoulder and Something like that. Anything you talk to God. Because why? You have just, just got into the uh, spiritual warfare or the spiritual field and you're not practically exposed to all theoretical knowledge and something like that. Yeah. And after a few years, you get into the toddler mode. And then after a few years, you not few years, after a couple of years, you get into the uh, little boy or little girl. And then what? You grow up. And then you get to the 10 years or 11 years mark getting into the teens mark and then you know your language changes your expectation changes then accordingly the father or mother they change their uh, you know language not a not in a rude or arrogant way but they, they change their um, language in such a way that you know you get necessary explanations uh, from uh, from them and uh, then what happens is after a period of time um, they get into the adulthood, right? And the adulthood is complicated because they ask all sorts of questions, even related to some of the sexual matters and stuff like that. And the hormonal changes induces a lot of other feelings. And yeah, they get into depression, anxiety, and all of that. And uh, yes, that's where the parenthood is really put to test. 
mature parents will not yell at their um, uh, children but rather they will walk with them they will be part of them they will be part of their struggles and they will be hand holding them and helping them to overcome yes and this is all something that you will enjoy from god and then afterwards they get into the marriage life married life and um, then they become mothers or fathers and etc and, and it goes on the journey goes on right as elders we always continue to hand hold and help them because why we have come across that path we are experienced we have seen it all and therefore we know pretty much when they get into that point of um adulthood or teenage life or whatever you you just know or parenthood they become parents for the first time you just know how to guide them because why you have gone through it and you're very experienced and you brought them up similarly there isn't anything that is hidden from the sight of god there is anything you know that is that is something that god is unaware of you you just you, you just have to go to him and tell him i need guidance my loving father i just need your help i just need you to hand hold me because why i am not capable but you are you are experienced what you are age is like 5 trillion years you have seen generations you are the master of the universe you are the master of the galaxies you are the one who created the earth yeah you are the one who separated the earth water from the land and you created adam and eve you just know everything god and don't keep on and on telling oh you god you are this you are that and all that god gets bored right he starts to yawn imagine the uh, you know some the, the son enters into father's room and start talking all about father father you are great uh, how loving you are and how how much is your bank uh, you know not bank balance how, <laughs> how much you earn and how much you help people this 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 and the father gets tired hey son enough enough it's okay i know who i am and you also know who i am it's unnecessary for you to tell me uh, or speak to me about myself and rather than get at the point what do you want why did you come you want to play with me come let's get into the field and start to pick up the tennis racket and start to you know hit the ball left right center why have you come son come here sit on my lap if he is a little boy tell me what's up this is how the father expects the conversation to change this is the pattern of the prayer this is the method of the prayer if you fall under the authority of god yeah that authority teaches you this pattern of prayer this method of prayer that's why i gave you a beautiful verse philippians 4:6 but people go to matthew 26:41 watch and pray lest you enter into temptation and all that but people don't follow the pattern the method and the expectation of god when you enter into his prayer room when you enter into the uh, to pray it's nothing but entering into his throne room it's not just a prayer room right any any every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and every mouth that confesses the name of jesus you will see the presence of god descending whether you are alone or whether two or three right because for both i have verses matthew 6 5 and 6 if you are alone lock up the room and call in the name of jesus you will see his presence but if you are two or three like people who went by the side of that uh, road of road to emmas right they talking about jesus likewise as a family you gather up and you talk to jesus family family prayer there also jesus ascends it's his throne room you don't keep on and on talking of him yeah talk about you talk about your plans and then ask god it's a dialogue yeah and that's a great experience you should feel it you don't feel it perhaps it's very clear my beloved don't be shocked don't be disappointed don't be discouraged god's presence is not there yeah you get into the fellowship of monologues you talk you talk and you alone talk and you exit the room and who's god why because you had been taught that way prayer our father in heaven hallowed be thy name and blah 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 say forgive you also forgive me and my sins are forgiven now oh, thank you lord bye goodbye what is this that's why i'm talking very much from the practical perspective as how you are supposed to follow that method jesus gave left, left behind an example or he just stipulated the pattern uh, it is a skeleton right you need to fill it up with the uh, flesh and blood and or whatever the, you know J- jesus gave a pattern but you need to take the pattern to the next level many people that's a kindergarten academics or that the kinder- kindergarten uh, agenda kind of thing curriculum right but you, you want to live in the kindergarten curriculum for 40 years brother you have not grown spiritually 
you have not gone any further from the point where Jesus left it 2,000 years ago and you stick to the same pattern. Well, many people don't even fall by that pattern. They think they are falling in. For example, I will tell you, forgive my trespasses as I forgive other people's trespasses. Do you really do that? Okay, if you don't do that, you know how the prayer gets transformed. Do not forgive my trespasses as I don't forgive other people's trespass. That's what it means. Are you seeing the other side of your prayer? Yeah, that, uh, that's what I'm trying to say here is, if you fall within that pattern, obviously you are a grown Christian. You are a matured Christian. Because why? There is so much of facts. There is so much of truth. There is so much of doctrines associated even in that simple prayer Jesus taught as a pattern. Yeah, you get into the insight, no? As good as like, it covers both the commandments, the two primary commandments Jesus left behind. Number one is, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind and soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Both the patterns are pretty much, you know, in line or covered uh, if you have followed that prayer taught to us by Jesus. But people are not even up to that level and that's the disappointing news, right? But then you are on that level, brother, you have not made a choice to grow. And I would definitely say that is a kindergarten curriculum. And many are not even out of kindergarten curriculum. They are like premature babies or premature mentally impaired children, right? Special child. They just don't grow. Okay. I hope you're all with me, right? I'm just extending the facts from what we discussed in our previous session as far as the prayer and the pattern and the method and the um, kind of doctrines associated to it. And many, many people don't get into that line of um, you know, discussion or line of debate. You can debate, of course, within the family, you can debate. Why not this way? Why not that way? Don't argue, don't quarrel, but you can debate. Debating is good. Yeah, it, in it induces a lot of reasoning. Um, anyway, but better have your limits. Huh? Debates naturally turn into disputes and arguments and quarrels and then what? Then each of them slap against each other and manhandling. And that's it. They spit on each other's face and they say goodbye. <laughs> now your limits, right? All, always Jesus also get into the uh, disputes, but it, it was like an argument uh, with limits. Be angry, do not sin. Fall under that principle, right? Good. Good, good, good. All these are principles which will be taught when you submit and surrender yourself under that authority. When you fall in line under that authority, you get all of these qualities for free. And to possess these qualities, you need to have access to those powers. God give you the powers to be mature, to be filled with knowledge, spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge and spirit of discernment. All of these will be given as powers, gifts. Bible calls those as gifts. Yeah, but they, they, they operate with powers. Okay. In, in On the same lines, what are we discussing here, right? We are discussing that other forms of authority delegated by the uh, God, uh, by God the Father, um, which includes that of the state of the apostles and the, they, they are so-called unique pillars of the church and recipients of divine revelation. And I picked that subject from Jesus who made a choice to get those apostles not without interacting with his father, not without asking his father's approval and permission. But I think we learned the method through which he approached his father and interacted with his father and then he makes his choice. On the same lines, I would like to extend it to one more topic from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 to 22 which talks about Christ is our chief cornerstone, right? Or in other words, Christ is our cornerstone. And I would like to read those four verses. And then we will see how to derive certain understanding and knowledge and what to say, some principles. Um, how to, uh, what to say, uh, understanding and the principles of, um, you know, sorry, deriving those principles and apply, applying to our lives. Verse number 19, of, therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, huh? but fellow citizens were the saints and members of the household of God. If you are falling under that authority, never ever be 
so humble that's why i just stretched that so humble calling oh, i am a worm brother i am nothing yeah i am the lost sheep brother i am blind god is my sight huh god is my good shepherd brother if you are living like that no you will never grow in your spiritual life because why some point of time god expects you to be the good shepherd you to be that good samaritan you to be that sheep not the wolf in sheep's clothing we are the children of light we are the ambassadors of god bible says i am the ambassador of christ paul said yeah we represent christ and we reflect his character we reflect his love through our lifestyle through our behavioral pattern through the words of our mouth which is as seasoned like salt with grace colossians 4:6 therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but you are fellow citizens with the saints of god and don't compare with the saints of god is a true saint of god for example paul the apostle peter and john the baptist and john the apostle and all that uh you can you compare and say i can no way become like john the baptist i can no way become like paul the apostle i can no way become like john the apostle what do you think they were born saints actually no that's exactly what bible recommends us to read and that's why these men of god were very 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 humble to register the facts that they too had mistake had made mistakes committed mistakes in their lives yeah and the holy spirit ensures they are all written and these guys were humble enough to make them right paul makes so many mistakes in his life for example elling at peter in front of other people <laughs> that's not a good good news right that where is this uh, you know submissiveness where is this humility before the leader of the church god appointed peter as a leader of the church which means what paul's leader is Peter too of course the leader might commit mistake no problem take him to the private this is how jesus rebukes yeah uh, but jesus rebukes peter in front of people also but not in front of a major crowd probably the disciples were around but it's their own team but when peter well, sorry when paul spoke of course both the jews and gentiles both were there and the guy humiliates him and the next time he shaves off his hair and next time he calls timothy and he circumcises him so many mistakes and paul calls and he makes them to write all of them and then he misjudges mark and then later he appreciates mark huh and then he misjudges judges demas and alexander they were part of him and then suddenly he hands them over to the satan of course they are not got to got to be called as innocent i am saying there are so many mistakes that paul the apostle have done right and john the ba- john jo- john the baptist being warned i don't think he followed he went again to uh, to herod and and he got present and beheaded jesus warned him and then if we talk about john the apostle james and john what they did sons of thunder they said let fire come down we will finish off these guys in one blow <laughs> every one of them peter you take so oh, the denial is enough three times how many times god would have jesus would have warned him no he did not listen uh, on peter we spoke a lot all these apostles were men of god great saints of god no way you and i could get closer agreed but not before they got into the spiritual mat- maturity not before they committed plenty of mistakes in their life and then they became the saints of god what makes you to say oh i am that worm i can no way become like john i can no way become like paul but jesus himself says in john 14 12 you can become like me and how dare you say that what do you mean to say i i'm using the word how dare you say that jesus is a liar right if you would say i cannot become like jesus then itself you are called as a then and there you are going to be judged and justified as liar how much more you are going to downgrade your standard 3 levels down or 10 levels down saying that i can't even become like paul the apostle why not you can become of course like jesus and i will tell you one more thing father is above jesus you know father tells matthew 5:48 as i am perfect you can become perfect like me that means what you are trillion levels down if you are going to tell that you can't even become like the apostles because apostles are trillion levels down jesus and jesus is one one level down that's it father above and he next he is next you're calling god a liar you're calling jesus a liar you're calling all the apostles a liar the reason why they lived their life is hey people please learn these doctrines and
prosper more than us. That's what they would love. Because that's called as true discipleship in Christ. They don't envy. Paul and Apollos, Apollos, they never fought with each other. Paul and Peter, they never fought with each other. Paul yelled at Peter. But you know how humble, humble Peter was? In 2 Peter last chapter, you read. He appreciates Paul. What a great brother in Christ. How rich are our scriptures and content. And he also leaves a commandment on behalf of Paul. If no one understands what Paul preaches and speaks, you better not preach. So much of respect they had. I forgot why I told that. <laughs> but I told it for a good reason is what I think. Yes? I mean to say, you can always compare. You can always try to compete. But not from lusting perspective, but from the perspective of becoming like Christ, pressing hard towards perfection. If that is your um, motive, if that is your objective, yes, Bible recommends. And that's why I'm speaking from this word of God, Ephesians 2.19. If Christ is your chief cornerstone, if you have submitted and surrendered your life to fall under the leadership of our Father Almighty, and you have access to all the powers, how dare you would call yourself as worm, that dust and that garbage and that pig and whatever, right? People get into the prayer room and they start hurling blows against themselves. They don't need anybody else to curse. And the devil outside the prayer room or probably inside the prayer room is enjoying the content. Oh, wow, good brother. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is it. <laughs> what a great spirit you have. Yeah, he encourages you more. <laughs> And he, would, and he would deploy two more agents who will be on your right and left. Huh? You, have the, you think they are your fellow brethren. They are, your, they, are, they, 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 they are fellow disciples of the demons. That's why you need to test the spirit and abstain from every form of evil deeds. And also from evil people. Do not have association for, with the people filled with those evil spirits and not falling in line under the authority of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22. And he deploys a couple of agents in the prayer room and they also encourage you, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, yes, brother, this is how you should talk. <laughs> Encouraging you pretty much. Saying that, yes, 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 we are worms, we are worms. You know, have you seen? One brother uh, prays and the other two brothers will be keep repeating, yes, father, yes, Jesus, amen, and go, hallelujah, and yes, God, praise God. <laughs> and you get all puffed up and, you know, it's like pep talk, right? You get all goosebumps and you're all worked up and then you continue to talk more. Oh, I deserve to go to the bottomless pit, father, and next level. <laughs> I deserve to burn in the lake of fire. I'm such a sinner and all that. What a confession, brother. Is this the reason why Jesus died on the cross? How rude. How, you know, how mean. These are all like modern trend languages. How mean, how rude and all that, right? Probably I'm talking like you. Therefore, you understand this better. How mean, my sister. Huh? You go into the prayer room and start hurling blows against yourself. What does it mean is... You're calling Jesus a liar. Jesus, you are a liar. You did not die on the cross. You did not shed the blood. Yeah, you did not rise up on the third day. Resurrection is a lie. Crucifixion is a lie. Lie, lie, liar. You're calling all the three liars. As liars, sorry. God, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the confession that proceeds out of your mouth versus what is written in the Bible as the truth of doctrines and teachings and um, you know, uh, principles and all the parables has no connection. There is a big void. It is heaven versus hell. Yeah. Heaven is pretty much Bible and hell is proceeding out of your out of your, you know, out of your mouth. The words of your mouth represents hell and demons and all the tortures and torments you're going to go through the place of torment in the hell. Brother, watch out. That's why Bible says, I will read this now again and you will understand this even better, don't you? Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, and but uh, sorry, and foreigners to whom you are no more strangers or foreigners to God, saints of God, believers in Christ, and all that. But watch out who is standing on your left and right. Are they agents deployed by the devil, or are they the ambassadors of Christ, the elect of Christ, chosen servants of God? You need to watch out. That's why I'm covering all perspectives encompassed. 
beloved if you are falling under that authority of god this is how you will function this is how you will think this is how you will react this is how you will check this is how you will be diligent you will be no different other than what i'm telling you by the help of my lord and savior jesus having been okay i'm moving on right uh, sorry the second half is but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of god household of god means what no bitter envy no fights no quarrels no disputes no jealous yeah no competition all of us support each other like how kidney supports liver liver supports heart and heart supports so blood vessel supports heart sorry i'm i may not be exactly right in what i'm saying right every single organ support each other and that's why the body is functioning and jesus spoke on that also right he tells you know eyes are very tired and says that no i'm taking off today hands you lead the body how will hand lead the body it doesn't have that uh, cornea and that lens and concave lens and all that you know how complicated is your eye the most complicated and delicate organ in your body are are, are your eyes beautiful eyes they are unique and that's why they scan the eyes very complicated to restore eyesight eye transplantation is the most complicated and god gave you that beautiful organ and that organ says oh i'm tired of leading this guy from one place to the other place today i'm taking off and it refuses to open up the eyelids yeah and then the and it dictates hey hands lead lead this guy anyway blind people you know how they walk right they will use their hand why because any object that touches um they will be alertful right and th that's how they walk but generally they use the stick and they are being taught to walk very sad situation i have great respect for blind people and i'll tell you what the blind people are very very spiritual very hard working very few be blind become be you know are begging on the streets etc but there are a lot of blind schools which encourage self education and self profession they are into making that soaps and this and that and um, you know they sell it for a higher price and, and they put it there made by blind school or something like that and people give more money double the money because why it's like charity appreciating them no eyes but beautiful soap a beautiful art craft or they are musicians they learn music you know shame on us they don't have two eyes imagine that eyes tells hand lead it what happens yeah household of god supporting each other walking in harmony walking in unity being unified under that one authority one leadership that's christ who is our authority and in other words who is our chief cornerstone on whom we build our church and church can be classified into two different uh, ways of you know narrating or in a, in a uh, defining or na narrating narration or definition uh, number one is your own body is the temple of god church in which the holy spirit lives father son and holy spirit all three live that is what john 14 23 one corinthians 3 16 two different perspectives given all constitute to the same meaning second way of looking at the church is yes the fellowship in that building church building but the members each of them are the small tiny churches they all you know form a, a big gang together joining hands in one accord one spirit one body one mind in likeness of god in lowliness of mind in his spirit of humility they operate supporting each other they don't gossip they don't sledge they don't they don't slander they don't get into all sorts of complaints quarrels battles gangs and groupism favoritism these are all demonic and these are all some things that are happening in the churches today show me a church without any of these you're saying there is a church huh? please invite me i will come there i really want to talk to you people you are like bereans bereans right you know berea church in berea paul never wrote a letter to that church you know why they are self equipped they are unified they read the word of god they live according to the scriptures they even question paul and they would not believe paul they would say brother paul hang on we will go to the synagogue verify the scriptures verify this check and we will come back wait <coughs> excuse me and paul was very proud of those guys and he and he quotes those guys as examples that's called as fellowship that's called as the members of the household of god together 
functioning in a harmonized way and they don't behave differently from versus this brother to that sister or that sister to this brother yeah you see that right groupism casteism communal rivals everything that you see in the world is definitely existing in the churches today all will be forming the gangs and they'll be throwing garbage at each other's face and you call that as church inside of you i'm saying outside full smile hugging also and kissing and all that but inside ha, look at this guy how he stinks ha huh? anyway, the mind voice will be different from what comes externally through your mouth i mean your thoughts are different from what you speak outside to the brother or sister that's not what bible is all about at least that's not this is this verse is conveying us right ephesians 2:19 you are having fellowship with christ you will have the same level of love with all your brothers and sisters why because the lord jesus christ is the cornerstone upon whom you build your foundation and you will not be let down moving on in the interest of time ephesians 2:20 having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone yeah having been built on the foundation the foundation is of course uh, laid by christ and christ himself is the cornerstone and the foundation or you can talk in different perspective is the cornerstone actually they place that cornerstone in such a place where the maximum stress level is going to occur and that's part of civil engineering many people have different perspectives but this is my explanation my humble explanation i'm not saying others are wrong that i'm only the person who speaks the truth not like that but this is my 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 perspective therefore he takes the complete load and stress upon which the foundation is going to be laid right upon which the superstructure is going to be built and within the superstructure there are going to be many objects placed including the windows doors and this and that and grill works and furnitures and all the sofas and then people sitting on the sofa the chief cornerstone will go through the major stress and when whoever are in the architectural or designing of uh, designer uh, you know what is it dcc they call it as right Des- uh, design of um, um, what is it concrete something i forgot dcc um, we had a subject in during our civil engineering i remember very interesting subject uh, they they help us out to calculate the stress and all that but yeah you you you, you you what is it you understand then you enjoy dcc you don't understand right you hate that subject many people hate that subject i hate mathematics because i don't understand pythagoras theorem what he talks about but dcc i understand why because they talk about the real time structure and i love it and those days i was beginner in the bible uh, i was just 19, 18 years old and dcc comes as a subject in my second year engineering i was what 20 years old and i was reading about this foundation superstructure and i <laughs> enjoyed that subject that is a correlation probably yes and they help us calculate the stress uh, so stress and the uh, strain and all that uh, which comes and descends on one specific area and to uh, you know kind of uh, collapse it uh, not collapse it kind of distribute the load they teach us where the columns must be planted where the beams should be coming and where the pillars should go and uh, what must be the size of the pillar and if this is the height of the building then what must be the width of the columns and etc 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 to reduce the load on the chief cornerstone yet the maximum stress goes to the chief cornerstone and therefore they lay a strong foundation and a strong pillar or a beam in that place and jesus is that person jesus is that pillar jesus is that chief cornerstone but we are all foundations right being the leaders in the church being the leaders of the family being the leaders the, of the world who lead people to Christ being believers who are we we are the foundation stones yeah and then on us the superstructure is being built yeah that's where i mean you are the leaders you are leading others and they are the superstructures but you are the foundation because you bear the load you bear the burden sometimes you bear the brunt of other people's mistake and yet you any time foundation rising up and saying hey i'm sick and tired man i'm just taking a break what happens to the superstructure <laughs> it falls down be might be will be the fall of the superstructure if it's built on a sandy foundation right versus the rocky foundation if the foundation is built on rock yeah no way it collapses and the downfall will be mighty bible says yeah so 
you being the leaders you are the foundation you just can cannot say ah enough is enough like how moses said many times enough is enough and the same moses pleaded with god when god said enough is enough he would plead when moses says enough is enough god would really pacify him this is called as fellowship you see you learn from both the fa- fa- father god versus moses very nice relationship i love their relationship one guy gets worked up the other guy mellows down the other guy get worked up this guy mellows down that was father versus moses read the book of exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy you will understand and that's part of the principles of authority if you are under the law of authority we are teaching from the law of authority subject right if you are that leader you know when to rise up you know when to mellow down you know when to humble you know when to rebuke people and correct them you will not do all at the, all at once no that's not the leadership skill you don't have the leadership quality if you are that brother who is wanting to finish everything today come right now in front of me follow me to my room <laughs> you won't talk in this language <laughs> you'll wait for the right moment of time you'll wait for the right season ecclesiastes 3 1 to 8 god works in this fashion this fashion and this pattern with his people and you will follow god's principle god's leadership quality you will be like god and that's when matthew 5 48 and john 14 12 gets fulfilled and that's how you become another cornerstone you become another foundation like how christ is our cornerstone and foundation <coughs> excuse me throat is getting a little dry let's come to the point i'll close in another few minutes okay and i hope you are with me right ephesians 2 21 and 22 we'll read and we'll close in whom the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the lord without foundation without chief cornerstone yeah without the structural design there is nothing called as the temple of god there is nothing called as the whole building is going to land up and being supported the superstructure i mean to say and that's why i took little longer to explain the concept of fellowship and then we spoke through the discipleship and we spoke through the meaning of that fellowship that you are no strangers to god no foreigners to god you are children of god and then we spoke through the foundation and the chief cornerstones concepts too and then now we are translating it to the holy temple you see slowly one after the other level progresses right then you you move from one level to the other level and then you find a beautiful temple of god and that also translates to your behavior pattern right once upon a time you were that short tempered sister once upon a time you were that lustful brother once upon a time you were the person who is full of idolatry and adultery and anything you call it but today you are the temple of god people see that what a, what a, what is say what a change in this person or what a you know how he is renewed renewal of mind and transformation of spirit romans 12 1 and 2 people are astonished mark 122 and 23 that's where we started right sorry mark 121 and 22 that's where we started right and now we have moved far away from that but we are still connected to that jesus enters into a synagogue and starts to teach as of one as authority and everyone who watched him and listened to him were astonished because some of the best of the scribes and the pharisees and the sadducees would not have this level of authority what a power he has yet they would not believe him what is the reason for being surprised and shocked because they thought he is that carpenter yeah and mary's illegitimate child this is the way how they looked at jesus they never believed in his birth absolutely if they would have believed they would have accepted jesus as their messiah they would not question him while he was hanging on the cross naked and woozing with blood all around and he say they say come down and prove it to us that you are son of god now we will believe how dare you challenge the son of god why because they always looked at him as a carpenter as a illegitimate child as a normal human being as a prophet probably some people but not the son of god how dare blasphemy they said and that was a final judgment verdict and he was summoned to death finished lastly evisions 222 in whom you also are being built together for a habitation of god in the spirit finally you see it's translated to the fellowship between the spirit that the spirit of god in you with the holy spirit who is inside of you and that's the temple of god 
I mean, that's when it becomes a temple. It has to be called as the temple of God, else it's just not the temple of God. It's something else. All right. So with that, we close and we will continue our meditation. Probably our next session should be the last session because I have only three more um, important points to be spoken and I will try to cover the next session. Maybe if we don't take a little longer also, we will... We, we, we will we will stretch it a bit and we will close and uh, yeah with this we will close this session and with the next session we will close this series i'm already hinting you and that tells that we are going to kick off new series soon each time we get into any subject like this yeah these are all some subjects which christendom gladly ignores don't you think so beloved i haven't heard anybody talking from the law of authority for 33 hours or 35 hours no not about the quantity again, right? It's about the quality. Look how much we meditate from the word of God and how beautifully God leads us. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your mercies and grace and your love and compassion, O oh Lord. These are some of the hidden truth and hidden treasures in the Bible that you are helping us to excavate and enjoy the fruit of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. Subscribe to our channel. Get access to all our playlists. And please help others sharing this word of God too and encourage them to listen to all these messages. Be an instrument in the hands of God. May God bless you. Amen.